from my experience, two pointers is the single most common pattern in technical interviews. If I had to guess how a random technical interview question would be solved, my guess would be with two pointers. In this video, we're going to dive into the three main sub patterns of two pointers and questions for each of those sub patterns. Sliding window and binary search are sub patterns of two pointers as well, but they will be covered separately because they themselves contain sub patterns. The first sub pattern of two pointers is approaching pointers. Here we're usually going to have an array and we're going to iterate on it with two pointers that start on the opposing ends of the array and with every iteration move closer towards each other. With approaching pointers as we process each iteration we need to find the state or states meaning the values of the left and right pointers that satisfy the condition for the question. For example we are asked to find two numbers that sum up to a target value in a sorted array but we need to use only constant extra space. We can solve this question in linear time with two pointers that approach towards each other from the ends of the array. Each time we iterate, we reduce the problem space by one element until we find the target value and then return it with the pointers indices incremented as the question asks. Here are some more similar questions to this one to practice this sub pattern. These ones and all the following ones will be shared in an Ocean template linked below with more in-depth tips. Another slightly different example that uses approaching pointers is sort colors. The question gives us an array of numbers and asks us to sort in place the colors red, white and blue that are represented by 0, 1 and 2. So we get some array that has these colors scattered and we want to return it when they are adjacent to each other according to the order. We start by defining three pointers, red, white, and blue, that represent three areas of the array, the left, mid, and right areas. As the pointers approach, we're going to swap the elements so that the twos go to the right side where the blue pointer is, zeros go to the left side where the red pointer is, and ones stay in the middle, and we slowly update the colors, starting from the edges of the array until the white and blue pointers meet which would mean that we have swapped all the colors we had to. In each iteration there are three options. If the color in the middle that is supposed to be white is instead red, then we swap the colors and finish processing these two indices by incrementing the white and red pointers. If the color in the middle is white, then we don't want to make any swaps because it's right where it should be. In the third case, the color in the middle is blue and in that case we swap the colors between white and blue and decrement the blue pointer to finish processing its current index. We don't want to increment the white pointer because the color we swapped might be red so we will need to process that case in the next iteration. So in this class of questions we are not only iterating with pointers that approach each other but we also need to swap around the elements as we go through the array. And sword colors is definitely one of the more involved problems. We solved it optimally using pointers and we basically implemented the dodge flag algorithm. These are all the questions for approaching pointers. With some of them you will do swapping and with some of them you won't. Either way, it will be quite obvious when you need to perform swapping. The second sub pattern of two pointers is fast and slow moving pointers. In this case, we will usually be dealing with a linked list data structure and have a pointer that moves ahead of another pointer. But that's not always the case. Sometimes we will still be working with arrays and let's see examples for both. Starting with linked list, in this question we are giving a list and we need to detect a cycle and if there is one, return the node where the cycle begins. And that's the tricky part. So first we define our two pointers, slow and fast. Slow will move one node each iteration and fast will move two nodes each iteration. So the idea is that if there is a cycle, they will have to meet at some point. Each iteration, we also make sure that the fast pointer that is always ahead of the slow pointer, unless there is a cycle, is not null. But also that the node that it is pointing to is not null as well, since each time with the fast pointer, we are going to skip one and jump to the next. Always keep that in mind in any linked list question because null pointer exceptions are probably the most common thing we overlook. Once the slow and fast pointers point to the same node, we've detected a cycle and now we need to find the node where that cycle begins. To do that, we're going to reset the slow pointer to the head and just iterate one node at a time with the fast and slow pointers until they point to the same node which would be the node where the cycle begins. But why is this true? 
Well, imagine that we have this loop that has n nodes. After n iterations, the slow pointer moved n nodes and the fast pointer moved two n nodes, meaning they point to the same node. So they will always meet every n iterations if there is a cycle. We can visualize it with this coil that illustrates traversing the cycles and for every n iterations, the pointers meet at the same point in the coil again and again. Now what will happen if we slightly pull the beginning of that coil? Now each time the fast and slow pointers will meet at an offset at point in the loop and that offset is exactly equal to the amount of nodes we pull. Because the amount of nodes we pulled equals to that offset, we know that if we reset the slow or fast pointer to the head and just iterate one node at a time, the first time they meet would be the beginning of the cycle. Now sure, this might make sense now, but how do you possibly figure this out on your own, let alone during an interview? If you feel frustrated, relax, there are two things here. First, the obvious, this is why you practice the common patterns and questions. If you never did, then solving to sum optimally would also not have been easy. But even more importantly, this is why writing down and sketching examples and dry runs is crucial. Because sometimes the questions you're going to solve will still be somewhat different and require some observation. You will most likely won't have a magical light bulb moment, but if you sketch a bunch of examples and observe what happens, you will start seeing that for all of the examples, the distance from the start to where the cycle begins always equals the distance from where the pointers meet to where the cycle begins. Let's see an example for slow and fast pointers in arrays. In this question, we need to move the duplicates in an array that contains numbers in a non-decreasing order by stacking them in the back of the array and then returning the number of unique elements. So we are not really moving duplicates, but updating the array so that its n unique elements are in the first n indices. We keep a slow pointer that will point to the most recent unique number and a fast pointer that will keep incrementing until we find the next unique number. When we find one, we will set the next value the slow pointer will be pointing at and then increment both pointers. We do this until we finish iterating on the array. Then we just return the number of unique numbers we found so far in the array, which would be the size of the subarray until the point where the slow pointer is pointing at. These are the questions for slow and fast pointers for linked lists, arrays, and strings that are basically arrays of characters. The third and final subpattern is separate pointers. Here we'll have multiple arrays or linked lists, usually two, and we'll be processing each with its own pointer at the same time to address the question. For example, we are given two linked lists and we need to find their intersection node. We will first just check that both lists exist and then define a pointer for each list. We will iterate with both pointers and move one node at a time until they meet. There is really one happy case where the distance from the starting node to the intersection node is the same in both lists. In that case, they will meet on the first try. But if that's not the case, one pointer will reach the end before the other. And in that case, we will set the pointer to the head of the other list. And then in the next traversal, when the other pointer is also set to the head of the first list, they will meet because that initial difference of the distance from the starting node to the intersection node is now accounted for. By resetting the pointers to the head of the other list, that difference is zeroed out, so they are guaranteed to meet in the next traversal. Now let's see how this works with arrays with another example. We need to merge array one and array two in a single sorted array. We get M, which is the number of elements in array one and N, which is the number of elements in array two. Array one is padded with N zeros, so we could merge the array in array one. I and J are the pointers we're going to use for array one and array two. And we're going to use another pointer K to point at the current value we are updating in the merged array. Since both arrays are sorted, we are just going to start from both ends of the array and we are going to iterate on array 2 because we really only need to figure out where each element from array 2 will go into array 1. Once we processed all of the elements in array 2 and we put them where they should be in array 1, we know that we are done. So now, as we iterate, there are two cases. In the first case, the current value in array 1 is larger than the current value in array 2, so we set the value in array 1 at index k to be the current value of array 1, and then we decrement the pointer of array 1 to process the next element. In the other case, we do the same just with the value of array 2. After that, we just decrement k's index before we process the next merged array value. 
We continue doing this until all the elements of Array 2 have been merged into Array 1. Here are more questions for separate pointers. You can check the description for a link to get the Notion template with all the questions for the sub-patterns of two pointers. Thank you for watching.